Lyme disease. I bet that when I mention those words, it stirs up all sorts of reactions. Here in Australia, when I say I've got Lyme disease, it creates a lot of questions. Some people have never heard of it, while others make reference to a celebrity that heard that has it, such as Avril Lavigne or Yolanda Heath. In 2024, most people might say, it's not in Australia, that's what my doctor told me. Another set of people tell me, oh, it can be cured with a month's worth of antibiotics, can't it? That's what Google told me. Well, to those people I say, yes, that works for the lucky few if you catch it really early. Unfortunately, though, for the majority of people, this is not their reality. And don't believe everything Google tells you. As you see me standing here, you might assume I'm a perfectly healthy 28-year-old. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. Disabilities aren't always visible. I grapple with a whole range of symptoms every single day from Lyme disease, and I can't recall the last time I felt pain or symptom free. What is Lyme disease, you might ask? Originally, Lyme disease was defined as a bacterial infection caused by Borrelia burgdorferi. Contemporary experts now view Lyme disease as an umbrella term embracing multiple infections, often transmitted through a tick bite. The effect of this bacteria, if left untreated, is that it can imitate a whole range of other diseases and conditions. And it is very clever at evading the immune system. Other conditions it mimics include MS, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, Alzheimer's, Bell's palsy, and the list goes on. Acute symptoms include rashes, joint pain, and headaches, while late stage or chronic Lyme disease presents with arthritic pain, cognitive difficulties, and fatigue. If left untreated, Lyme disease can become chronic, affecting every tissue and organ in the body. The reality is an increasing number of Australians are becoming chronically ill after a tick or bug bite. The common telltale signs of infection, known as getting the bullseye rash, only occur in about 20 to 25% of cases. You may have heard of the following illnesses in Australia, which are officially recognised by health authorities. These include Q fever and different types of rickettsia, such as Australian spotted fever, these infections can be very serious and have similar Lyme-like effects on the body. Now, Lyme disease is a highly controversial topic. Whether it exists here in Australia is often debated. But for the next 10 minutes or so, I don't want to go into the politics. I just want to share a brief snippet of my personal experience living with Lyme over the last seven years. Living with an illness that is not recognized by my country I would love to, in the process, raise awareness of the severity of tick and other vector-borne diseases. The main roadblock to receiving proper treatment and diagnosis in Australia is based on researchers not finding the bacteria that causes Lyme disease in any of our ticks. This perspective, however, is based on a single 1994 research paper that failed to find Borrelia in Australian ticks despite many Australians having positive lab tests without having left the country. Tick bites being the most common way to contract the bacteria. Now, it's important to understand that earlier and later studies have found Borrelia species in ticks that have been removed from Australian fauna, domestic animals and cattle. Before falling ill, I was in a happy long-term relationship. I was excelling in my career in product development. I owned an investment property and I traveled overseas for work. I felt confident, relatively happy, social, ambitious, and I was envisioning a successful and happy future. It was a week after my 21st birthday when my life changed forever. I experienced a week-long headache I was homesick from work all week, and on the Friday, things worsened. I remember it so vividly. I began to feel tingling down my arms, around my mouth, and I had slurred speech. 
I was convinced that I was having a stroke. My boyfriend at the time, freaking out, rushed me to the emergency department where I stayed overnight. They ran so many tests, including an MRI, and discharged me with everything appearing clear. Now, from that moment on, more unexplainable symptoms slowly began to creep on, month by month. Severe brain fog, recurrent migraines, night sweats, insomnia, involuntary movements, fatigue, jaw pain, and body pain, just to name it. Over the next two years, I gradually found myself on the path to eventually becoming bedridden. I became so incredibly sick, saw over 20 different doctors, specialists, and practitioners with no viable answers. I was forced to quit my dream job, my relationship was breaking down from the pressure, and my friends slowly forgot about my existence one by one. I was mourning the life I once had. I was left feeling so incredibly isolated and alone. I couldn't drive, I couldn't socialize, and I could barely hold my head up at points. I was fading away rapidly at only 23 years of age. Doctors labeled me as depressed and insisted that it was all in my head. Perhaps for them it was unusual to see a seemingly healthy 20 something year old girl complaining about problems typically associated with older individuals. However, I felt far from normal. They prescribed me multiple types of medications to mask my chronic pain, brain fog and insomnia. And of course nothing helped. Even with my body failing me, my determination was tenacious and I became my very own health advocate. Realising I couldn't continue on the current trajectory I was on, my research led me to consider Lyme disease as a possible culprit behind my dozens of mysterious symptoms. The first red flag was that I slowly started to get unwell after a trip to Europe where I got bitten by bed bugs just before my 21st birthday. Another red flag was that I had lots of mystery health issues consistent with those of Lyme disease since I was a child. Constant mosquito and bug bites, I was always riddled in them, especially after family holidays to Queensland. And along with getting bitten in Europe, I knew that it could be a possibility. Although I quickly discovered the controversy surrounding Lyme in Australia and how challenging it would be to receive treatment in this country if it were my diagnosis. <laughs> Nevertheless, I sprung into action. I found a Lyme literate doctor, which is extremely rare, and requested my blood to be sent to America for testing. In January of 2018, I received positive test results for the bacteria causing Lyme disease, Borrelia burgdorferi, and multiple of its co-infections, including Bartonella and Babesia. Having finally received my results, Finding a doctor who could treat me in Australia would be the real battle that I wasn't prepared for. It is especially hard to find treatment in Australia due to APRA disciplining or deregistering the GPs who are treating Lyme. Right after receiving my positive test results, my Melbourne doctor referred me to a Lyme disease specialist on the Gold Coast. Due to regulations, I had to travel every three months to see him in person with phone calls in between. Travelling every three months was a significant struggle, consuming much of my already limited energy. During my first trip, lasting about six weeks, I underwent a rigorous protocol involving oral antibiotics, anti-malarial medication, IV antibiotics, and the dreaded whole body hypothermia treatment. This intense heat treatment, typically used for cancer, is aimed at killing the Lyme bacteria and was supposed to boost my immune system. I did around 10 to 12 of these sessions in around six weeks and it was incredibly traumatic. I felt like I was on the brink of death in every session and the recovery period was very challenging, marked by dehydration, migraines, and flare-ups of all my symptoms. It was overall horrendous. Unfortunately, I continued to decline, which was disheartening given a couple of success stories I had heard. Lyme disease is complex and under-researched, and what works for one person might not work for another. At this point, the quality of my life felt like it was crumbling. My relationship was strained, and navigating such a health challenge at such a young age was overwhelming for the both of us. 
The unknown about late stage line added to the pressure we faced as a couple. We of course hoped it would be easy to treat, but it felt more like a never ending death sentence. A doctor even told us that Lyme is a relationship killer straight to our faces and that we basically had no hope of lasting. Fast forward two years, I could still barely leave my bed. My relationship had now ended and I felt abandoned by all of my friends who were off traveling and building their careers in their 20s. My struggle was and still is invisible. The sleepless nights, the night sweats, the body aches, horrendous, horrendous reactions to all kinds of medications, body pain. I went to all lengths to get better. I tried multiple types of diets. I lost weight, gained weight, had major gut dysbiosis from so much antibiotic treatment. This caused me such severe constipation that I couldn't go to the toilet for about a year and a half. All of my little energy went towards doing enemas every single day and colonics once or twice a week. Just surviving became my full-time job. When I finally accepted that the Gold Coast treatment didn't help, I started to go deep into the Facebook groups that had loads of fellow Aussie Lyme disease sufferers who were in similar positions to myself and just desperate to get better. These groups at the time were a godsend. I felt seen, heard and understood for once in my journey. Based on many positive recommend recommendations, I made the decision to go to Cyprus in March 2020 to get help from a clinic over there. This was not a cheap endeavor. My parents had to sell our family home and we moved into the investment property I had purchased before I got sick. My mom, who was my carer, came with me to Cyprus for a two month treatment protocol involving multiple 10 pass ozone sessions. Basically in these sessions, your blood is drawn into an IV bottle and then medical grade ozone is added to the blood using an ozone generator. The ozonated blood is then returned to your body. This process is repeated. Now, I was still not improving and my quality of life was limited. I was still not able to work, only driving short distances on the odd occasion. During one of my routine phone calls with my doctor on the Gold Coast, he delivered the disheartening news that he could no longer help me. Strict Australian laws and regulations left him with no additional treatment options for me to explore. His recommendation, head to America and see a doctor over there, where many Australian Lyme patients sought treatment. I went back to the drawing board, researched more doctors from America to Mexico to Europe, and I made the decision to go to Switzerland as I had a friend who had some success over there. Switzerland, January 2022. This was an incredibly tough time for me. Unfortunately, the benefits weren't as significant as I had hoped, prompting me to cut my stay short. I couldn't help but feel the guilt of being such a financial burden on my family more and more. I simply didn't want to be here anymore. Homesickness weighed heavily on me and the language barrier was another roadblock. My body, fatigued from all the treatments, showed poor responsiveness to interventions at this point, leading me to the difficult decision to return home. Seven years on, since my first symptoms began, and I'm still struggling with chronic neurological Lyme disease, a challenging invisible disability that persists. At the moment, I can't afford to financially or mentally pursue any more treatment overseas. I've worked extremely hard to manage my health and I'm finally back to working two days a week. I'm unsure if I'll ever be able to work full time again or participate in life to the capacity that I once did, but I will continue giving my best effort to live my life to the fullest. I'm speaking up as it's my wish that future generations in this country won't have to face the challenges I've experienced. It's crucial to emphasize that an earlier diagnosis would have significantly improved my chances of recovery. The widespread suffering of after tick or other vector-borne diseases is a result of delayed diagnosis, limited treatment options, insufficient research, and a lack of education. 
My brief talk only scratches the surface and I'm open to answering any questions you might have. If you or someone you know needs assistance or if you'd like to help in your own way, please contact the Lyme Disease Association of Australia. Thank you for listening.